Okay, welcome everyone. I'm Sheila Belanger. This is the training, Does Your Inner Escapist Need Some Grounding? Get a remedy from your inner first aid kit. So glad you're here and trusting it's gonna help you a lot. So what's in this training today? It's a little bit of who this inner first aid kit training is for and reminding some of you the challenges of inner edges, a little introduction of the transformation journey roadmap. And I'm gonna give you two remedies from your inner first aid kit for your escapist. One is a process to shift your escapist mindset. And the second is a connection with wholeness ally and animal ally to support you. And at the end, there'll be an optional Q and A. And so um, we'll see how that rolls. Okay, so who is this inner first aid kit training for? <laughs> You're ready to shift limiting inner escapist checkout patterns. And I have to tell you, these are only a few images. I went looking and there's so many images of what we in our culture use as either a process addiction or a substance addiction to check out. And I say this with great sympathy as well as humor because it's um, an epidemic in our culture of a process of escaping and checking out. And as we go through the training, I'm gonna remind you that that's because there's parts of us hurting, but there are so many ways. And so I think you're here because you wanna shift some inner escapist checkout patterns and effectively, effectively navigate the edge of change between your outworn versions of self held hostage by your inner escapist and who you long to be in these pivotal times. It's so important that we're all here, present and accounted for. The world needs us, we need us, okay? Um, yeah. Okay, so. When you're at the edge of inner changes, your sensitive nature can feel stuck and overwhelmed. Just, wow, just over overwhelmed. Now we know inner edges are challenging. At these edges, you know that your old life and identities are over, but you do not yet know who you are or be becoming nor where you're going. At the edge of inner changes, your inner escapists can sabotage your ability to go forward with evasion moves. Happen to have an example here, but pick up anything, the process, the addiction, whatever it needs to be, um, you know, it's there. So this might look a little familiar. Your, your character might have something else that it uses to evade, but I think we all have some kind of character that's gonna let us try to evade. Now, I wanna introduce myself. Um, and just in case you don't me, know me, I'm Sheila Belanger, a strategic transformation coach. And as a certified coach, I use a process-oriented approach to guide you at the edge, the place where your past and future selves meet. For over 36 years, I've effectively translated mindset shifting inner work practices into life-changing ways for thousands of clients. And some on this live training are in my private membership group called Vibes, and they can attest. They've had some kick ass as changes in their life as they've had the courage to apply the inner practices that we've been sharing together. I love doing this work. I want to free my people, okay? <laughs> so you need a map to help you navigate unfamiliar inner territory so you can break your inner escapist spells and be free to move forward. Now, here's my signature transformation journey roadmap. It's a guide to navigate your edges of changes, and it's six stages that are so um, powerful to move through, so powerful to move through in terms of doing your inner work and your transformational work. And I'm um, sorry, I got to mute everybody. <laughs> Okay, there we go. We're just going to bring some extra folks into our gathering here. Okay, <laughs> it happens. Hello. So, and the transformation journey roadmap, you really work through these different stages. And I'm going to pinpoint two as an example in this training today, working with the inner escapist and remedies for the inner escapist. So in case you want more information about the roadmap, you can go to my YouTube channel called Transformation Journey Roadmap. Just put that in search and YouTube Transformation Journey Roadmap. And one of the videos is Get a Transformation Roadmap. And in it, I talk about all six stages and the journey with it. So uh, I'm going to just go. You also need an inner first aid kit to help remedy your inner escapist evasion mindset that's holding you hostage. 
so, so important. Now, two remedies I'm going to offer you from your inner first aid kit today is remedy number one, a process to make attitude adjustments, and remedy number two, a way to steward your sensitivities, and more on that is coming. Now, you're more than you think you are, really. You, you know that deep in your belly. You carry many selves within you. There's a whole guest house inside, all kinds of inner characters, okay? We know that. It's like, wow, it's, it's a full house in here, okay? And you have wounded as well as wholeness inner figures. And most of your dominant wounded inner figures are often habitual and rooted in your adaptive childhood survival strategies. And we all have some version of this. And it's not any kind of criticism of our families. It's like, it's how we get enculturated in the society. You do this, you don't do this. These parts of you are fine and welcome at the table. Ah, we don't wanna see that part of you. So we learn to be a good kid, a good girl, a good boy, et cetera. And our dominant wounded inner figures are there to keep us in line because they believe that their job is to protect you by keeping you small, safe, and invisible so that you socially belong. They are what I call your limiting protectors. They're trying to protect you, and that's a good thing, but they're doing it in such a way that's caging you and making you small. And you know what? Most of the time, you don't need their protection anymore. It's way past the shelf life. It's expired on that one. Now, one of the things I'm going to reference right now very briefly, and you can certainly go and do more research with it, is a book called Bill Plotkin called The Wild Mind, A Field Guide to the Human Psyche. And in it, he talks about four different wholeness parts of ourselves, wholeness allies, I call them, and four different wounded parts or fragmented parts. And his nature-based map of the psyche is really beautiful. It's based on the four directions. It's very nature-based. And Bill talks about their four dominant strong wholeness allies in us and four wounded parts or fragmented ones. I'm going to show them to you really briefly and we're going to uh, go after the escapist, okay? So in this book, Joanna Macy has a little quote about it. Through the nature-based map of the psyche, we can find not only our powers of leadership, joy, sensuality, and renewal, but also the dragons of self-deception, whose energies we can liberate for the healing of our world. Yeah. So the wholeness allies, from Bill's point of view, they're innate psychological resources in an individual that we carry. We all carry them. And there's more than four, but there's four strong ones. And the trouble is we haven't cultivated them because we often get overwhelmed by our wounded side that we forget we have wholeness in us and we want to cultivate that. So here's very briefly the four um, wholeness allies from that map, that uh, wild mind map. In the east is the sage innocent. It's like the sunrise of spring and of, and spring and the sort of opening up to awareness. The south is the wild. He calls it the wild indigenous one. I like to call it the wild embodied one because it's problematic sometimes a white person using indigenous as language. So the wild embodied one, that's the one in you that is in your body, is in touch with your feelings and whatever they are. And it's like you belong to the earth. This one knows you belong belong to the earth and you're in your body. The West wholeness ally, he calls the muse beloved. It's the one of you that longs for the mysteries and the dreaming and is really interested in transformation and shedding old skins. It's very sunset, fall, autumn, okay? Very mysterious, powerful part of ourselves. The North he calls the generative and nurturing adult. It's a strong, grounded, mature, life-giving part of ourselves. And we have all of these in us. So those are the four wholeness allies. And then he talks, Bill talks about the four fragmented ones. These are wounded parts of ourselves. And he calls them subpersonalities also, but here's a definition and you might resonate with this, okay? The wounded and sometimes hidden fragments of our human psyche. They form in childhood with the enduring purpose of protecting us from physical, psychological and social harm. They are the source or instigators of our psychological symptoms and illnesses. And we all have them. And there's a, a place of just deep compassion because it's part of being human. We have these very, these strong suffering ones in us as well as our wholeness. Now, here's the four that he has in the map, um, in the directions. And again, I'm just going to briefly uh, show them to you. 
I'm also taking a moment here to, these are the wounded ones. In the North, we have what Bill calls the loyal soldier or the lion temper. This is the inner critic, basically, who's always trying to keep us small and watching over us and just really tight assed. And then in the East, he has the addict and the escapist. We're checking out in whatever way, we're just escaping. And we're gonna spend more time honoring this one and giving some remedies for this one. In the South, we have the wounded children, the place where our deep pain and suffering as kids is still living inside of us. And in the West, we have what's called the shadow and shadow selves. And these are the really mysterious, sometimes we call them the not me part of myself. That's not me, that's not me, but yet it is me, okay? This is very brief. If you wanna look more at this, you can go to the Wild Mind book and see um, from Bill's book, Wild Mind. So we're gonna focus in on, on the East fragmented one, the addicts and the escapists. And Bill says they try to keep us safe through evasion, rising above traumatic emotions and circumstances and sidestepping distressing challenges and responsibilities, evading, I'm out of here. Okay, there's many ways to do it, but just checking out. Now, a bad attitude is like a flat tire. You can't go anywhere until you change it. And when we're caught in our escapist mindset, we can't get anywhere. We know that whether we either physically are caught because we're in a substance addiction or we're energetically caught in a process addiction like screen addiction or um, some form of um, some form of process that we're caught in over and over and over again. Um, now we're going to look at stage two of the roadmap here where we make attitude adjustments. You make key mindset shifts to develop a visionary mindset. Visionary mindset is that much bigger awareness that you carry and we all carry. Now, one way of looking at mindset, it's a set of beliefs or a way of thinking that determines one's behavior, outlook, and mental attitude. How do you shift your mindset? You make attitude adjustments and we all know much easier said than done, okay? Now, Wilson Kennedy has this great quote, to change your life, you have to change yourself. To change yourself, you have to change your mindset. Right, how do we do that? Well, one of the ways you're gonna do it is working with process work. Now, I'm gonna give you a brief introduction. To, this is process-oriented psychology, and it offers you ways to explore your multi-dimensional nature. Now, process work is a multi-level and interdisciplinary approach to individuals, relationships, groups, and organizations. It's a basic art and scientific skill for following the various experiences and communication styles of people around the world. It was developed, process work was developed by Arnie Mandel while he researched illness as a meaningful expression of what Jung called the unconscious mind. It has been further developed in collaboration with his wife, Amy Mandel. Now, I'm going to give you just a brief overview. There's key aspects of process work worldview that are important here. And then we're going to do a process work by choice, if you want. I'm going to guide you in a process work exercise for your escapist to give a remedy. So key aspects of process work are the roots are in Taoism, deep democracy as a concept. I'll speak to that in a moment and what we call three levels of awareness. So let's go into each of these. The roots in Taoism. You follow the wisdom of the flow of nature. The process shows the way. Now with the Transformation Journey Roadmap, you'll learn to track and align with your authentic visionary processes. So these are processes that are always happening in you. So the roots in Taoism, you follow the flow of nature. Deep democracy, everything belongs. There is equal value and importance to all people, voices, and levels of awareness. And with the roadmap, you learn to honor all your unique inner figures and voices. And then finally, the three levels of awareness, really beautiful concept from process work. Um, again, it's another map like any others, take it with a grain of salt. I find it to be really trippy and really helpful. So the top level of the level of awareness, he calls consensus reality. It's the everyday reality that you live in. It can be a place of polarization, but it's absolutely necessary. It's like you got to get in the car and get your groceries. You got to raise your family, you know, take care of yourself. It's, it's beautiful, but it can be limited. Underneath it is what he calls the dreamland. 
This is the land of dreams and deep feelings, mythic and archetypal realms. This is a place where you can heal polarization by exploring being fluid with roles and feelings. It's a very shape-shifting kind of place, okay? And we can all access dreamland. And then underneath dreamland, third level of awareness is the essence level. He calls this the non-dual realm from which everything arises. The realm of energetic tendencies, vague feelings, and intuitions that you cannot verbalize. And all three levels of awareness are always present. Most of the time we stay in consensus reality because it's habitual. We think it's the only game in town. Ah, oh, hello. Okay. Now, the three levels of awareness are always available to you. And process work offers some pathways to expand your awareness. Let's talk about dream doors. Now, these are places in your consensus reality consciousness where the doors open to dreamland, okay? <laughs> like Alice in Wonderland and the rabbit holes. Down you go, okay? In your psyche, you can cultivate the ability to open dream doors and allow the wisdom of dreamland to help you in your everyday life. That's one of the ways to bring magic into your everyday life, to access dreamland and have it connect with you in consensus reality. Wow, life is so much better. Okay. Now, one of the ways you can also work with um, the three levels of awareness is something called a flirt. And this is from process work, the idea that consensus reality, this top level moves along constantly according to clock time. The sentient realm, the essence realm, non-dual realm comes up and manifests at a particular moment in consensus reality. A flirt is one of those moments, a faint body sensation, a fleeting image, something that catches your attention. Okay, it's like we all have that experience. You see something out of the corner of your eye and you turn to look and it's not there, but you could feel it. Okay, something is flirting with you. The first way you usually notice sentient experience or essence level non-dual is through things that flirt with your attention. Now, normally you marginalize a flirt because we're busy with our consensus reality gig. You know, here's the laundry list, got to do this. Blah, blah, blah. That's cool. But by tracking and following flirts, you allow the wisdom of essence to help you in your everyday life and to expand your mindset. Now, why I bring this forward as we're working with the escapist is that the remedy here is a flirt practice to help you make attitude adjustments. And I'm gonna guide you this in this in a moment. But why I'm bringing it to you for escapist issues is remember the escapist is a wounded part of ourselves that's trying to check out through unhealthy addictions or processes. We're trying to go into an unhealthy altered state. We're trying to leave and check out and go into a different reality. Well, a flirt is an incredibly healthy way to go into an altered state of consciousness. Okay, and it like opens you to the non dual realm of oneness rather than um, disassociating you and checking you out. So that's why I'm offering you a flirt practice. Okay, so, so to do a flirt practice as a remedy for your inner escapist, you're going to go to the description of this video, and in it, you'll see the link to sign up to listen to the flirt practice. Before you do, I want to leave you with this quote from Werner Earnhardt. You and I possess within ourselves at every moment of our lives, under all circumstances, the power to transform the quality of our lives. So go to the description, click on the link to listen to the free guided flirt practice to support your inner escapist and get a remedy from your inner first aid kit. The link but the audio is in the description below. To get access to the guided FERT practice as a remedy for your inner escapist, click on the link in the description. You'll be taken to this page and you can see right here the button. Click to get a remedy for your inner escapist and it'll take you to a sign in page. Once you sign up and click the button, you'll directly go to the guided journey for the FERT practice. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching this video. 
If you found it helpful, check out these other videos. And don't forget to subscribe. Tap the subscribe button so you'll be notified when new videos up every Tuesday. And thanks so much for watching.